You know, first off, you know, I want to give, uh, give a lot of credit to Lipscomb. You know, they're really well, really well coached. Um, Lenny does a great job. Uh, uh, got a lot of respect for him. That's why we played them. We knew that they were going to be a little bit different style of basketball than we played to this point in the year. Um, they do a great job on the offensive end of, of ball movement, uh, back cuts, the Princeton offense. Um, I knew that would challenge our guys, especially off the ball. Um, you know, we ended up, I think, with nine kills um, on the game. Uh, I thought after the first four-minute war, uh, we started to get a little bit better rhythm on the defensive end. I think they had 10 points in the first four minutes of the game. Uh, I thought we kind of settled in on that end of the floor. We still got to do a better job taking care of the ball. I know we had five turnovers in the second half, but uh, we need to put that the whole thing together and play 40 minutes of, of, of taking care of the ball. But I thought the ball was moving for the most part. I thought our guys really tried to make the extra pass. We ended up with 21 assists, which is a, uh, which is a good sign. Obviously, we dominated on the offensive glass. We had 21 offensive rebounds. Um, and it was good to kind of get everybody out there, get everybody a little bit of playing time, see what guys can do. You know, I want to give a special shout out to Don Terrius James. You know, Don, I thought, uh, played really, really hard. He gave us a big spark there in the first half and in the second half. And, and, you know, my message to the team afterwards was very plain and simple. You know, if you ever feel like you're in a funk, you know, make me play you. Uh, and you make me play you by playing really, really hard. And, it, and it's amazing what happens uh, when you just lose yourself in the team and, and play hard, which Don has. Um, I thought he did that a little bit against Florida in the few minutes that he played there. And, and I thought he gave us a big jolt of energy in both halves of basketball today. Um, but we're looking forward, uh, again, I'm looking forward to watching film, seeing obviously there's a lot of areas to improve on, but um, pleased overall with our performance. Coach, how nice was it to look down your end of the bench and see everyone in uniform ready to play? Yeah, it's it's nice. You know, I think we have to figure out uh, rotations, Adam. You know, you know when all of a sudden you have uh, uh, Kiki and you add Daniel to the mix, we got to figure that all out. You know, we haven't we've been kind of binged up kind of off and on uh, this this uh, this kind of preseason, whether it was Jason being out a month or Daniel or Don Terrace was out a month. Um, makes it hard to kind of find your rhythm as a team, especially on the offensive end. Um, so we got to get used to playing with each other and, and learn our, or learn what, what lineups kind of work and what kind of doesn't work. Um, but it is nice to have that depth. Kiki's first shot, he very nearly pulls up from the logo. Is that – does he have that green light this year from you? He does. You know, he, and he, he's got to figure out his rhythm. You know, and again, it, it's first time – it's one thing doing it in practice. I mean, he's uh, – He's a really good scorer. He's a really good shooter, and we need him to do those those things. Um, you know, but it's different than all of a sudden playing a game. You know, your legs get a little heavier. Um, you got to find your get your wind, you gotta get your rhythm. We try to limit his minutes tonight. Uh, kind of just wanted to kind of get a, see how he was out there. His foot felt great, uh, which is good. But you know, he'll 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 play much better than he played tonight. He's he's a really good player. Coach, I have Owen here. He's eight years old. He's got a question for you. Um, so, what do you look for when you're recruiting high schoolers? Owen, if you wear that Xavier hat, I will definitely recruit you. All right, that's first and foremost. Um, you know, I, number one, I, I think is is character. You know, we want guys that are uh, about the right things off the court. You know, character develops, and then we want tough guys. We want guys that are mentally tough, uh, can fight through adversity, and I want guys that win. I want guys that come from winning programs. Um, which, again, I'm going to go see uh, Dewan Odom and, and Colby Jones later on today. Dewan Odom's won multiple state titles, so has Colby Jones, and that translates. That means they've had to sacrifice, and they know what it takes to win, which is really, really important. It's a good question, by the way. Much better than any of Adams. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> um, again, today we see Zach Fremantle prove that he's able to really relieve Tyreek Jones and play valuable minutes. I, how important is that, especially at that position, to be able to rely on him the way that you have been? Yeah, it's good when he's not not in foul trouble. I mean, he had three fouls in three minutes in the in the first half. You know, he uh, he's a really good offensive player. I mean, he offensive rebounds. He got long arms. He got great instincts on the offensive glass. He's got a good motor. Um, he can finish with either hand, left hand, right hand. Um, he's very comfortable. Our guys trust him on the offensive end. He's got to get better on the defensive end. I, I, you know, again, like I, I, I look at the kid, Asan, who's a, who's a tremendous player. He's very skilled and very patient. Um, I thought he kind of got Zach a few times. And, again, we're going to show him film. He's got to grow in that area. But I love what he brings to our team, Zach. Uh, I think he's got a chance to really, really be good for us. 
Travis, you had a stretch in the second half where uh, Najee Marshall gave you nine straight points. How big is that to have a guy like that who can score in bunches like that for you? Yeah, it was good to see. You know, Najee got off to a rough start. You know, he, uh, he had a couple bad misses. And, and, but you know what? He was able to kind of keep, keep his mind. And, you know, I told him at halftime, I said, hey, man, shake it off, next play. Uh, Got to move on. And, and he was able to do that. And I think he's capable of scoring in big bursts. He is. And I think the biggest thing for Najee is just continue to play slow. Um, that helps him, man. Like, if he can get to his spot, he's 6'7". He could shoot over the top of a lot of guys in that mid-range and in that post. Um, and, again, just playing slow for him, I think, is the key on that offensive end. But he's a tremendous player. Coach, the scoring distribution seemed like it was apparent today because uh, 10 different scores and four were in double digits. Is that level of scoring distribution something that you're kind of looking for and that you were pleased with today? Yeah, you know, I think without, again, watching film yet, you know, I thought our shot selection overall was better uh, this game than it, than it was in the Florida game and in the UConn game. Uh, I thought we took better shots. I thought we moved the ball. Um, we got the ball because they played a lot of zone. Lipscomb did. Uh, I, th I didn't think we were as stagnant as we were when we played against Missouri State. It was the last team that really zoned us. Um, I thought we had better player movement and ball movement, which I thought led to some really good shots. And I think our guys are really trying to make the right play, you know, because we've been trying to make a big point of to our guys, we've got to stop wasting all these possessions, right? And we still had too many turnovers tonight, and we had 14. Uh, but we've got to get that number down, and we've got to continue to find the open guy. And if we do that and we have that mentality, I think we'll be able to, to score the ball pretty well. You know, a few weeks ago, you were getting pretty much asked about Kiki every day. You know, well, what's his status? When's he going to be able to play? And I think a few times you said, you know, flat out, I hate seeing him over there. Not not involved, not on the floor. As a coach, when you're anxious for a guy to get out there, just like all the fans are anxious, and you finally see him knock down that first shot, like is there a moment that, that you have there that, that you can share with us? Yeah, I mean, it feels good having him out there, right? I mean, he's our, he's our best shooter. Uh, he can really, really score the ball. Um, but I always want to try to temper expectations of fans. And I think sometimes you think all of a sudden when a guy gets back from an injury, hey, they're going to be back to their 100% level. Uh, it takes time, especially for a freshman, because he, he literally did not practice for over a month. And we've changed our system and continue to add things to our system. During that, the train doesn't stop just because Kiki gets hurt, right? You know, it keeps on moving. And, uh, and he'll figure those things out. He'll get more comfortable out there on the floor um, against zone, against man, whatever they're in. You know, again, it, it, he's a uh, – but he's a, he's a gifted scorer, gifted playmaker, and he adds a different dimension to our team, that's for sure. Coach, your bench outscored theirs 33 to nothing. You talked about finding the offensive rhythm with getting your guys back. Were you expecting it to happen at this quickly? Um, you know, again, like I think it's just one game. You know, I, I want to see, you know, obviously continue to, to go move forward. I told our guys before the game, I just want to have that growth mindset. I want to get better. That's all I care about um, is our standards and our quality of play. Um, and I thought we took a small step forward today. That's just one game, though. You know, again, like we got to, that's got to become who we are all the time. And like I said, still got too many turnovers, 14. You know, that that number's got to be that number's got to be at least eleven or less. I would say again, I don't know the number of possessions that were in this game, um, but again, we we got to get that down. So there was a point in the second half when Kiki came out. You kind of had a conversation with him a little bit before you went to the bench. Mm -hmm. Can you share a little bit of what you might have said to him? Yeah, you know, I think uh, you could tell his rhythm's not there. You know, uh, it, it, it takes time. It really does. Number one, he's got to kind of relearn our system offensively and defensively. Um, and he's got to get in the good just game flow, you know, and uh, and he'll get there. You know, missed a couple shots on his. Again, got to be ready to shoot every single time. Because, again, he shoots it so well, that sets up his drive. I don't want him just to be a shooter. I want him to be a drive because he can drive the ball really well as well. Um, and we got to get him in the paint. And uh, he's got to be able to sell his shot. And then I told him on the defensive end, he's got to play a little harder, right? You know, I, I want to see more burst. I wanted to see him turn the ball a little bit more, um, you know, be in a stance, not just play so upright. But I think he was a little tired. <laughs> He's trying to get his win back, you know, which, which it's nowhere close. But we'll, we'll get him there. Travis, you, uh, you weren't, you know, too tested in the second half. But yeah. if you look big picture-wise, through eight games, you've had some ups, downs, some big tests. Um, how good is that for this team 
this early in the season because it's kind of rare to be tested like this throughout eight games, you know, that much this early in the year. How good is that for your team? Yeah, you know, I think we've played uh, a lot of different styles so far. You know, you've seen like the Princeton offense played against Missouri State who kind of ran the burn offense almost. So I call it, they kind of, you know, burn the shot clock and played zone, press back to zone. And we played teams play a little more up-tempo. Um, I think it's good for us. It prepares us for, for the Big East. Um, you know, and again, you got to be able to operate in close games. You, you do. And, and I think our guys have been able to execute down the stretch pretty well other than the UConn first overtime. Uh, we've been able to operate down the stretch and get the shots that we want. Um, on both and then defend really well at the end of games as well. Um, and today's obviously was a little bit different. Um, I wanted to kind of, but you got to be able to learn how to play with the lead, right? So that's just as important as playing in a tight game or playing from behind. You got to learn how to play with the lead, how to use the clock to your advantage, but still not lose that aggressiveness, right? You don't want to pull the reins back too much because uh, that's what happens to a lot of teams and then they start to really stall out. So I thought our guys did a pretty good job. You know, overall, again, without watching film, of, uh, of keeping our aggressiveness on the offensive end as we still had the lead. What, uh, what's the biggest thing about this team's character you've learned through this first eight game stretch? I think we can handle adversity. You know, I do. You know, I, I, I was last year, uh, our team didn't handle it very well, especially early on in the year. I thought as the year wore on, we got better. Um, but I do think the adversity piece, we've been able to figure out how to overcome that, how to stick together, which, again, serves us really well moving forward. Um, then I think our guys also have that they know who we are. You know, we have to be a defensive-minded team for us to be a really, really good team, and that's every single night. Is that it? Thank you.